All right, welcome back to Fanboy Explosion. I'm Seth. And I'm Cameron. And our next and last topic for today is going to be uh, nostalgia and video game purchasing. Now, this is this is kind of a weird topic, but I want to talk about it because um, Project Ukulele um, has been announced that they are going to be doing a Kickstarter in May. And if you don't know what this is, this is a new uh, project that is, quote-unquote, the spiritual successor, and we're going to talk about that term, uh, to Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, produced by some of the same people that made Banjo Kazooie, um, their Kickstarter is going live in May, and there's a a lot of hype around this game for fans of of Banjo Kazooie and those types of games, um, because it is kind of you know we're seeing a resurgence of these uh, spiritual successor games. Um, so Cameron, my question for you, yeah, do you think that nost- like because basically. By using the term spiritual successor, you are tapping into nostalgia, right? You're trying to recreate an experience that someone had before. Um, Do you think that that trend of tapping into nostalgia, do you think we're doing it too much? Like game creators are doing it too much? And do you think it's a bad thing? Um, Specifically, like, you know, Nintendo's been doing it for years with their specific, like, you know, business model is they kind of, a lot of people say they keep releasing the same game over and over and over again, but they do something different each time. So they are rehashing the same characters, but they're doing something different each time. But now you have a lot of games that are coming out that are, you know, they, they say they're spiritual successors and they're basically the same type of game. You know, one example I think of is like Axiom Verge is coming out soon and it's very much harkens to Super Metroid. Uh, Shovel Knight was a huge release from last year. Um, you couldn't tell that that thing didn't come out on this SNES. So, what do you think? Do you think that this is a trend that... Is it a trend at all? Is it an issue that people are doing it? Um, and do you think it's overdone? Uh, I mean, I don't think it's an issue. I think as long as there, there are quality games, um, whether or not it's cashing in on nostalgia is kind of a moot point. I mean, they, they, the reason people... You know, they, they do the 8-bit graphics and they, you know, call things spiritual successors. Is because you're right. I mean, they are trying to attract an audience who is into that sort of thing. You know, with Shovel Knight, it, they were trying to attract the, the fans of, you know, like Mega Man and all those old kind of old school games like that. You know, with the Project Ukulele, they're trying to attract Banjo-Kazooie fans. Um, and, I mean, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think as long as those games are are good... Uh, quality products like I love Shovel Knight um, and I'm not even actually that a huge like Mega Man or kind of old school um, NES player but I love Shovel Knight just it, it just because it went all in with that retro feel and it it pulled it off you know really well um, so yeah I don't I don't think it's a problem um, now is it is it done a lot I think so I mean especially I think in the indie game field use a lot of indie games now whether or not this is just because it's easier for like 2d animation with sprites and things maybe that's easier to make something than it is for like 3d modeling and all that stuff that probably has something to do with it but especially in the kind of the indie game field we see a lot a lot a lot of indie games that are all trying to use those yeah trying to all use those 8-bit 32-bit graphics pixel art um which is cool i love pixel art I love 32-bit graphics. I love all that stuff. Um, but you do see it a lot. Now, I don't think it's... Once again, I don't know if that's necessarily a problem, but it's definitely a, it's definitely a trend. Like, people are very aware that people who have grown up, like, they grew up... Like, they were... When they were kids, they were playing the NES and the SNES. Uh, now they're grown up. You know, developers are very aware that, that, like, people enjoy that stuff and like to kind of want to go back to that every once in a while. And I mean, the developers are fans too. They grew up playing that kind, those kinds of things. It's the same case. They grew up playing this kind of game. They're like, oh, well, I'll make this kind of game. That reminds me of this. And, you know, I, I just think it, it kind of flows naturally. It just makes sense in a lot of ways to uh, cash in on that. But in terms of like spiritual successors, I mean, there are tons yeah, of things. What is your view that of that spiritual. term specifically? Because it's really like, you're right. Like, there's a lot of technical reasons that someone may choose to go with a 32-bit game um, or do a 2D side-scroller or something. But when you start to use the term spiritual successor, in my opinion, that is... And this may be 
a wrong opinion, but I view that as there are no wrong opinions, Seth. Well, that's right, but I see it as piggybacking off of someone else's work. And well, but sometimes, but a lot of times when you're doing a spiritual successor, you, successor, you're piggybacking off of your own work. That's right? true, and that's what they're doing in the in the case of Project. Yeah, uh, right. Ukulele. I mean, like they they're not making Banjo Kazooie two, but they're making something that they feel is similar, or like fans of Banjo Kazooie will really enjoy. Banjo Kazooie so, two was Banjo Tooie. And true, very true. Um, so they're trying to, yeah, they're trying to capture that audience. Um, but yeah, continue with what you're you were saying. Well, no, so, and 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 a thing we we talk about this being a trend, but I think about a game like Shovel Knight. Like Shovel Knight won a lot of people's game of the years. Like it is a fantastic game. Um, and if you think about it, Shovel Knight is just like, like there are countless NES titles that have that same type of aesthetic, the same type of fun, and, uh, you know, level of engagement that it has. But I think the, f- the reason so- Shovel Knight did so well is that there were n- there's been no games like that for, like, ten years, minimum. You know, like, there hasn't been, like, a, a flood of games. Like, there used to be on the SNES. You know, there used to be a flood of these platformers. People were trying to uh, piggyback off the success of Mario, and they kind of burned out their own industry. So Shovel Knight came back in and kind of revitalized this industry. Um, so my, my follow-up question would be, if this trend continues, do you feel that we're going to get, because I'm already starting to feel it a little bit, and specifically right now, it's Metroidvanias. I love Metroid. Like, I never played Super Metroid until a couple, like, about a month or two ago, but I, like, it's phenomenal, and I love that type of gameplay. But I just played Ori in the Blind Forest, Guacamelee came out, you know, a couple year, uh, about a year or so ago, and... We've got Axiom Verge coming up, which is an, you know another M- Metroidvania, and I keep hearing this term pop up and up and up again, and I feel like it's starting to people are starting to burn it out or burn it into the ground. Do you think that this trend of like retro and things like that are they going to burn this out, or is this something that's kind of pushing gaming to the next stage where we can't get a new Metroid from Nintendo, so we're relying on spiritual I mean, successors? I, I mean, I that. think there are phases and trends. I would definitely say I think. And I'm not using trend in the way that like it's a bad thing. I just think, um, well, for example, trend is a, just a trend. A long-term trend that I think we've seen, you know, in the past. I don't know. Let's say since Xbox 360, for example, okay. is um, shooters. It seems like shooters are probably the dominant genre and have been for a while. I mean, if you just think of all the shooters, like all. Um, a vast majority of like the big name titles coming out every holiday season are first person shooters. Yeah. And I think some, we can thank of Call of Duty for that mostly. Yeah, exactly. And so that's just kind of the trend. It's and it has been for a while now, like these big triple wave um, shooters. Now I think and I think we're seeing a trend with the Metroidvania kind of style gameplay. It's having a bit of a resurgence. Uh People, I mean, people love that type of gameplay. They love Metroid, like you said. There hasn't been a new Metroid, especially a new 2D Metroid, in a very long time. Fans, uh, you know, they like that kind of gameplay, and they're they're wanting something. And so when these other games come out and kind of scratch that itch, um, I think they're they're finding success. And Ori in the Blind Forest, I mean, is is a fantastic game all around. But yeah, especially if you like. Metroid, and you like that style of gameplay, you're going to find a lot to really enjoy in Ori in the Blind Forest. Um, so, I, so yeah, I think it, I think it is a trend. I just don't know what that necessarily. I don't know if that's once again. I don't think it's a bad thing, and I don't think they'll. I don't think it'll burn out. Um, I just think those kind of things wax and wane. Uh, so we'll see. You know, several of them right now and then a couple of years down the line who knows what else it may be It'll, it could be something completely different yeah i'll tell you another another genre i'm you said shooters are, are kind of the dominant and i think i would agree with you in the triple a space but in the indie space uh survival crafters oh God. for sure i mean minecraft for sure, that's made a popular waves. thing right now minecraft and, uh, spawned a thousand of those kinds of things yeah i mean even even today i saw a, a video uh from a youtuber and it was making fun it was poking fun at that that zombie survival craft you know it's just like that like it's it's being parried because you have rust 
uh, you have DayZ. Well, I mean, Day Z, Well, Minecraft started it, that kind of building survival kind of thing. But then oh, after yeah. that, now you have Rust, you have DayZ. Um, I can't remember. There's some one where you, like, you're on an island. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, there's like Terraria, dinosaur. Terraria, Starbound, and Terraria, the Starbound. World. There's dinosaur kind of variations on this. Uh, even No Man's Sky, which is coming out, that's in that same vein. Uh, it seems like there are a ton of those games, and I think that's a trend. Like, I mean, will people kind of inevitably, inevitably get burned out on it? Um, with there just being so many, and are they all that different? Um, I mean, they're not a ton, totally different. Uh, some have zombies instead of dinosaurs or vice versa um so yeah i mean i think people will get burned out but the, i mean i think minecraft has shown there is a really a big demand for those kinds of games and developers realize that that there was enough space for them to carve out you know a, you know their own little habitat uh, in that market so I, th- I i think we'll see as time goes on i mean i think we'll see those die down um, I mean, Minecraft seems like it can never slow down, but some of all these other ones, I think, you know, it seems like every every week on Steam, there's another early access crafting kind of game like that. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, I give it a couple of years, and I, I think those will die down. And, you know, may, maybe we'll see something else new take its place at that point. So you'd classify it as trend status at this point? Yeah. It's not I like t- the next trends, step. But not in, like, a bad way. Like I, Like I said, just... They come and go. There will always be these kinds of things. It's just sometimes, you know, they get really popular and then they'll die down and then there will only be a couple. I mean, I think a good example for a trend is uh, side scrolling beat em ups. You don't, you see very few of those nowadays that used to, uh, tons, almost tons of games, just like you were saying earlier with platformers, like on the SNES, uh, your chances were, chances of any game for the SNES. Uh, it's like 50% platformer, other 50% side scrolling beat em up. Yeah. And like you already, that's, that was like the vast majority of titles because it was an easy formula um, to follow. And I think now we see that with like shooters and kind of like, yeah, these crafting games. But now, I'm make a prediction. Well, we're lucky to see maybe one or two uh, side scroll beat em ups like every couple of years. Well, yeah, you're right. The last one that I can remember is the Scott Pilgrim game. Yeah, Which, I think uh, uh, Castle Crashers and Scott Pilgrim vs. the World are, are really the only games that have come out in the past five years that I'm probably missing some, um, but those are the only things I can think of right off the top of my head. I've got a prediction. Yeah. I've got a prediction. E3 2015, they're going to announce new Battletoads, hands down. It's going to be a huge deal. Side scroll beat them up. Just well, there like you the go. We might, see a, we might see That's a revival trend. of that kind of, of that genre. Um, yep. Hopefully. Now is that we'll now see. Battle Toads? I think is a really good example of cashing in on nostalgia. If you want oh to call yeah, that. and that's corporate. Uh, I mean, that's a that is a big big money like like that's yeah, not I like mean, an indie developer. So here's a franchise no one has seen anything from for a long time. Uh, I don't even know if it's a, like a revered franchise. I mean, there are no, definitely it's, people. No, I have the perfect description. It is infamous. Yes, it, it is, is an infamous, infamous. franchise. Yes. Um, and so they have this name. Everyone knows what like Battle Toads is, but how many people have actually played Battle Toads? Probably not a whole lot. I mean, I've played it, but um, and I'm sure several, you know, a lot of people have. But it's not like this giant thing that's coming back. Well, it's about um, to be though. But but that's the thing. They're trying to cash in on it. They're like, look at this. You know, it's a it's a difficult, old school side scrolling beat 'em up. You know. Will it have like retro graphics or will it have newer graphics? And you know, who knows if it if we do get a new Battletoads game, what it will look like. But I think that's a perfect example. It's it's specifically cashing in on that nostalgia for that gone time period where games used to be more difficult, where that a genre that we don't see often anymore. Um, and if that fills a very unique uh, spot in the current market that is not being satisfied, that they think they can kind of bring back. So yeah, I, in terms of cashing in on nostalgia, I can't think of a better definition than what Microsoft is probably going to do with Battletoads, which there I'm all for. Go. I mean, I would be, in, I'm really interested to see if if that is a reality, which we're pretty sure it will be. Uh, be really interesting to see how that how that com- plays out. So let me ask you one more question: um, What franchise would you like to see 
a quote unquote spiritual successor to? We got Banjo Kazooie coming up. Oh my, that's a big question. We've got Battle Toads coming up. What would your pick for that be? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like the Godzilla game. Well, but you can't make a spiritual successor to Godzilla. Just make another Godzilla game. That's true. Yeah. Um. I mean, there are genres I very much enjoy, and there are series within those genres that I very much enjoy. Uh, but in terms of spiritual successor, like, spiritual successor is, like, the a term you use when something is, like, dead. Like, there's not going to be another entry in this franchise, so we're starting a new franchise that's going to take some of that DNA from that dead franchise, and we're going to put it in a new body, and we're going to yeah. add some new stuff to it. Um so just I'm I'm just trying to think of stuff that like I don't think is ever gonna come back and that they would try to like spawn something off of, but I can't I can't really think off the top of my head. I don't know. Do you have anything that you would want to see come back in For a me, new body? I mean the normally it would I, I would say I wanted something like I wanted the good old fashioned like Ducktales style side scroller, you know, two D side scroller that was vi- that was somewhat difficult, but Shovel Knight scratched that itch completely um but the over like overall i that, yeah, that, that is a tough i, I impose that question on you but <laughs> <laughs> i didn't have a i didn't have an extremely amazing pick um just because like a lot of my early like a lot of my early gaming was pc gaming it was half-life it was shooters i mean like shooters that's what i that's what i grew up on you know like i remember playing super nintendo and nintendo but uh, not to the level that I play PC games, but uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think that right now, like people are finding the the sweet spots, like you said, the side scroll beat 'em up, the uh, you know the difficult platformer with the bouncing mechanics, like Shovel Knight pulled that off really well. Uh, looks like we're getting Banjo Kazooie, which is that fun 3D platforming. Like I like my first instinct would be like 3D platforming in the vein of like uh, Super Mario 64, but that's basically like what. Like that's kind of what uh, uh, Banjo Kazooie was, and I, I think that's true. I think and Nintendo's I would say, doing yeah, we, that with Super Mario World. Like that's what that was. So it's yeah. it's it's hard, but I'm sure there's one out there. I'm sure there's a type of game out there that hasn't been touched like that yet. But uh, we'll have to see. You never know. I honestly, I think that something like a Chrono Trigger, like just kind of like a classic JRPG. Well, or yeah, back. like that that action based combat. That's like you get in, and then you you know you're having to. Like, it's moving in real time. It's not turn-based. Because turn-based, like, we've always had that. And, you know, I think Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts do the 3D version of that well, really now well. We have, yeah, it's like action kind of combat. But I think it'd be cool to, yeah, have, like, some some zany characters, just like uh, Chrono Trigger had, and have this uh, overworld that you're navigating in a, in a top-down kind of perspective. That I think that would be an interesting approach. But I would want to see, like, I'd want to see the Kickstarter video, you know. Like, I'd want to see someone do that, so... Yeah, and I think Kickstarter, I mean, is like a really great way for some of these ideas that we haven't seen in a long time to come back. And I think we've seen that. Like, a lot of times you go to Kickstarter and then someone is trying to revive an old franchise. Or, yeah, oh, yeah, they are labeling themselves as a spiritual successor to this style of game. Actually, a really good example of this is um, there's an older D&D game called Planescape Torment. Now, there's a new game called... Uh, coming out actually oh wow now i can't even think of what it's called um but it's got a lot of the same developers of planescape tournament and it's that same like top down very narrative focused uh game which we haven't seen in a really long time and that's what they said they're like this is not a sequel to planescape tournament um but it is Uh, it's a spiritual (laughs) successor so anyone who has played planescape tournament was are automatically oh wow uh this is really exciting i want to get on board with this um and that's from that's coming, I think, from Obsidian, uh, along oh, with. Cool. I think that's right. Now they're also making Pillars of Eternity, which is another really old school, almost like Baldur's Gate kind of style, um, RPG, which I think that. So I think that's coming back. That trend is kind of coming back now, uh, Ooh, as yeah, well. Like the like the old school like Fallout and stuff like that. Yeah, like the old school like kind of over the top, top down uh, RPG. Yeah, like Wasteland Two. Yeah, uh, is a great example of that as well. I mean, now now that's a sequel to like a franchise that was a long gone franchise, um, but that's bringing back a genre we have not seen in a while. 
So yeah, that's like a revival more than a spiritual successor, but same, you know. But it's similar similar deal, and you know, yeah, everyone who played the first Wasteland, or even people who have played early Fallout's, now they look at Wasteland Two. They're like, oh wow, I remember playing this. Uh, this looks like a lot of fun. This looks, you know, pretty similar to the old games I used to play, but with some like modern ideas and modern graphics and things like that. And you know, people people pay attention to that, and they are willing to pay for that. And I think that's why we've seen so much of it. Awesome, awesome. Well, that's that's it. You know, I just kind of want to get your thoughts. But uh, for the viewers out there or listeners, um, what do you think? Uh, are there too many spiritual successors? Do you think that that's a, a a good term? Is that a bad term? Can it be misused? Um, and if you have a spiritual successor that you'd like to see for a type of genre or a specific game, let us know. Tweet us at Fanboy Explosion. Send us an email, fanboyexplosion at gmail.com. Uh, or if you're listening on YouTube, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Um, but thank you guys so much. This is uh, We're going to be wrapping this topic up. So thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>